So you're looking for a 4th gen Firebird or Camaro. It has more modern reliability and features while still having that old school muscle car feel with a solid rear axle and a nice American V8. Some people call this the ultimate mullet car and some people call this the last true American muscle car. In this video we're going to go over everything you need to know about a 4th gen F body aka a Firebird or Camaro so that you can make the best judgment and buy the best one. First we'll go over the years, then we'll go over the trims, common problems these cars have, the rare parts that will add value to the car that you're looking at. And and last but not least, the top five rarest colors you can get so you can stand out a little bit more in your new F body. A little disclaimer though, this video is going to be more targeted towards the Firebirds just because it's hard to pick the top five rarest colors for two different cars and also because I like it more. So if you want to see a dedicated video to adjust the Camaro, leave that down in the comments. So let's get started. The fourth gen Firebird ran from 1993 to 2002 pretty good time span almost 10 years and during that time span they had four different engines you could choose from the first and by no means the best is the 3.4 v6 made from 1993 to 1995 these had 160 horsepower and 189 pound feet of torque and in 1996 to 2002 they had the 3.8 v6 also known as a 3800 this had 203 horsepower and 225 feet pounds of torque so if you're looking to get the v6 model they are still extremely cheap try to go for the 3800. If you want to bump up and be a real American and get the V8, the LT1 was made from 1993 to 1997 and had 275 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. And they later swapped it out for the LS1 in 1998 to 2002. This is by far the best motor you could get, but it's also by far the most expensive motor you can get in one of these cars. It came with 305 horsepower to 325 horsepower, depending on the trim you got, and around 340 to 350 pound-feet of torque. Just listen to that beauty. Now for trims, they can kind of be confusing because they all start with an F or a T and there's a lot of them. So first off, you got the Firebird. This is going to be the base model. It's either going to come with a 3.4 V6 in earlier years or the 3.8 V6 in the later years and there's nothing special about it, but it is still a great car. Then you go up to the Formula, which is the same exact body style. No body kit, just like the Firebird, but you have the V8 engine. So this would be the best bang for the buck car just because you don't have to pay Trans Am prices, but you still get the V8 in your F body. Next, you move up to the Trans Am, which has that beautiful name. I think Trans Am is one of the best named cars ever. It just sounds so cool. And this comes with the same setup as a Formula engine-wise, but has a different front fascia, rear fascia, and side skirts. You could also get the Trans Am with the same spoiler as a Formula, or you could go with the up-level spoiler as an add-on. And if you're really looking to spend money, get the Trans Am WS6 package. And that is one of the most beautiful cars in existence. It looks like an angry shark. That comes with a Ram Air Performance Package. Instead of two holes in the front of the car, now you have four. You get better suspension, high polished 17 inch wheels, dual oval high polished exhaust outlets. And even though you could get this package on the Trans Am, you could also get it on the Formula, but it is a little bit more rare. And with the Ram Air Package, the horsepower was at 305 horsepower and 330 foot pounds of torque. And at the cream of the crop, if you wanted a race level Firebird, you would get the Firehawk Edition, and that came with a bunch of stuff. The package included a functional rear am hood scoop and a reworked exhaust manifold. You had an option to get a freer flowing exhaust system, which bumped up the horsepower by 10. You got five spoke 17 ZR1 style wheels, a Hurst shifter, Bilstein shocks, stiffer rate springs and bushings, and a larger front sway bar, along with the Torsen rear differential. You also got that up level Trans Am spoiler, fog lamps, and a car cover if you wanted it. And not all Firehawks have all these parts, but these are all the parts you could get with the car. All of these cars were shipped straight to SLP from the assembly line, and that's where they got all those modifications added onto the car. After 1997, GM said, you know, we can do it ourselves, so they started doing all of these modifications on their own assembly line. So if you wanted an SLP specific car, uh, make sure you go before 1997. So now that you know what trim and engine you want in the car, let's go over the common problems these engines have just so you know what you're getting yourself into. Just to keep the consistency, let's start with the 3.4. These bad boys were underpowered and had poor gas mileage, and their main problem was intake gaskets and head gasket failure. Now we're moving up to the 3.8. This could almost beat a Mustang GT of the same year, and this was a V6. So it's a great motor, and the only thing that really was bad about this motor was head gasket failure, if not maintained. But these motors are bulletproof and they're honestly one of the best v6s ever made now on to the lt1 okay 
this is where it kind of gets tricky with all the problems. Sometimes the water pump goes out uh, before 100,000 miles. And yeah, I know that's pretty bad. Uh, but the main problem with these cars is the OptiSpark failure. And let me tell you right now, it ain't cheap. From 1993 to 1994, it had a non-vented OptiSpark, while the 1995 through 1997 has a vented OptiSpark, which is better because it allows the moisture that builds up in there to escape, unlike the non-vented ones. And pretty much what happens is the water pump is right on top of it, and when it starts leaking, it will get into the OptiSpark, and um, it just causes a boatload of problems that you don't want to deal with. So there's two different fixes for this and this could honestly dissuade you from getting an LT1 or earlier year car. The first one is doing the LTCC conversion, which costs around $1,000, uh, but it still retains the weakest part of the system. Great, the optical sensor, which if you want to do it once and do it right, uh, it only leaves you with one option, which is to do the 24X conversion, which means you're converting to the LS1 computer and ignition system. This is the best way to fix the issue, but also costs $20. $2,500, which honestly, if you can find an LS for $2,500 more, that is a deal. And these factory units can last for around 100 to 200,000 miles, but it honestly all depends on when the water pump starts leaking. And now it's time to discuss the common problems of the engine that almost everybody in the F body scene wants the LS1. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty great motor. I can't say too much about it other than I really want one myself. You know, there's regular maintenance issues, but there's nothing that kind of really stands out about this motor considered bad. Now let's get into the more general problems you'll just find with owning any fourth gen F body. So the sill panels, which are pretty much gonna be like the C and D pillar uh, right next to the rear window, sometimes bubble up. And the best and only option to fix this is just to replace them. Also the interiors in these cars were not made well. This is a GM car from the early 2000s. You can't expect much. So the dash pad will crack and the door panels will also crack. And on top of this, to make the interior a little bit more livable, sometimes you might get the rainforest effect. And that's because the T-tops leak. And uh, if you're going through a car wash or if it's just raining, or if you leave your car outside, uh, you might get it and it will be wet. So moral of the story, just don't leave your F body outside if you have T-tops. And if you don't want to leave it outside and not have to worry about leaks at all, just go get yourself a hard top. The 10 bolt rear end on these cars are known to go out if they're driving hard, but what F body has not been driving hard? Uh, this is a muscle car. I mean, what do you expect? There's at least gonna be 100 burnouts that the last owner's not gonna tell you about that he just did before selling the car. Another leak comes from the taillights. Water will get in them. It will create uneven fading. And uh, yeah, so you might have one really black taillight and one that you can still see the red. And because of the T-tops, you have another big problem, which is if the water collects at the bottom of your car for a prolonged amount of time, you will get underbody rust, and that is no good. If it does have underbody rust, stay away from the car. Rust is a pain to deal with, and you don't wanna be the one dealing with it. The chances are they're selling it to you because they know about the rust. And although we all love pop-up headlights, there are a lot of problems with these pop-up headlights because one of two things, either the headlight motor is blown or those little nylon gears have stripped. Uh, the best way to fix this, get a new motor and get some brass gears so that you never have to worry about these little bad boys stripping out again. Talking about bad motors, you also have the window motors constantly going out on these cars. Yeah, man, it's GM. What do you expect? Car looks good and they made a good motor for the car. But other than that, uh, you know, it's kind of iffy. The last thing I would advise, uh, just because this is a muscle car and these do get beat, uh, definitely check out that transmission, go up through the gears, go down through the gears if it is a manual, just because the day before he sold it to you, he probably took it to the drag strip. And maybe if you search hard enough, find his Instagram and you'll probably see the video on his story. Now if you're looking for something a little bit more special than the run of the mill Firebird or Trans Am, I've got a couple special editions for you that you might want to check out. First one being the 25th anniversary edition. This is going to be a white and blue paint scheme. You're gonna know right off the bat what it is. And this was made for the 1994 model year. The things that you'll see that'll stand out on this car is the GM bright white paint and the tile blue center stripe. This color was also in the interior too, which had embroidered headrest and door panels. It had 16 by eight aluminum five spoke wheels, finished in that same white color. It was pretty much just an appearance package, but dang, does it look pretty good. For the 25th anniversary edition, they made 338 hardtops, 1412 T-tops, 
250 convertibles, which is the rarest 25th anniversary edition body style, and altogether that was 2,000 units made. If you want something even better than the 25th anniversary edition, look for the 30th anniversary, which was made in 1999 and came only on the Trans Am package. Because the 25th anniversary edition had one stripe, they had to outdo it, so for the 30th anniversary edition, they had two blue stripes with blue anodized five spoke 17 inch wheels. The interior again was white leather seats, door trims, and special stitching badging throughout. They only made 1,065 coupes, 535 convertibles, which equals 1,600 altogether. And the last edition I want to tell you about is the final year they made this car. They had the collector's edition, which had bright yellow paint with some decals on the hood and sides of the car. Uh, this is probably one of the most sought after editions and you'll probably see a lot of these in the convertible form. Now, if none of those special edition colors catches your fancy, we have got four more for you. Usually it'd be five, but because the 30th anniversary Trans Am is the fifth rarest color, we only have four left, and here we go. If you're like me and want a weird color that almost nobody ever chooses to get on a car, uh, then this is perfect for you. You've got Sunset Orange Met, and that is an orange color total of 784 of these were made, so they are quite rare. They were made from 2001 to 2002, and pretty much all of them were either a Trans Am Coupe or a Trans Am Convertible. Now, I do have to say, orange does not look good on a lot of cars, but damn does it look good on a Firebird. I don't know if it has to do with fire in the name and the color kind of looking like fire itself, but that is one sweet car. Especially since it's just not a bright orange, instead of it's more like a burnt orange, it really does just catch the lines of this car so well. The third rarest color on the list would be dark green met, and they really only made half the amount of last time, so it's only 381. So if you find one of these, yeah, they're pretty rare. And these were only made in 1996 and 1997. I think I actually saw one of these for sale near me with only 30,000 miles. I got one in like 15 grand for it. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, but it was a damn good looking car. The second rarest color on this list is Sport Gold Metallic. And now for this color, I can kind of see why it's rare. And it reminds me of like a late 90s, early 2000s Camry. Uh, good luck, because they only made 65 of these. Now for probably my favorite color on this list, and it just so happens to be the rarest color on the list, is Bright Purple Metallic. And this straight up reminds me of Plum Purple from Dodge. And geez, does this thing look good. Unfortunately for me, if I try to find one of these, they made a total of 12. So all of these are probably in some old guy's garage or in a museum. So um, yeah, that's one dream that I can cross off my list. But if you do find one just sitting outside or in some old guy's garage, make sure to offer them your highest lowball offer because this is definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video of the ultimate buyer's guide on the 4th gen F bodies, specifically the Trans Am, but this also relates to the Camaro. If you guys want to see a different car, go down to the comments and leave what car you want next. I love domestic cars, I love import cars, I don't really like German cars or anything from Europe, but that doesn't stop me from making a video. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe, join the Discord if you like to game or talk about cars, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.